Hey guys, today I am going to be talking about equations of state. So, um, the objectives for my video today are going to be to go through uh, ideal and non-ideal gas equations, and then uh, how to use the Pitzer method. Uh, then I'm going to show you guys Van der Waals equation, Rudlick-Quang, Rocket equation, and then I'm going to go over what beta and kappa are. Uh, these are all really useful. You're going to use these. Um, you're definitely going to use these in this class. Um, not alone, but you're going to use them tied in with other problems um, when you're doing, um, when you're finding enthalpy or entropy or things like that. So you're going to need these equations. Um, really quickly before I start, uh, you're going to see me talking about um, a few things in my video. Uh, I just want to clarify so that we know what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about reduced temperature, which I've talked about uh, in a video before, actually, in my heat effects video, um, just a little uh, reminder, I'm talking about um, it being T over T critical. So if you have ammonia, let's say, at 300 degrees, your T would be 300, and your T critical is something you're going to find specific to ammonia in your tables. Uh, that you guys are going to have. And the same thing for P reduced. It's pressure over critical pressure. Uh, and then also you might hear me um, about something called omega. Um, no, sorry, <coughs> what am I saying? Eccentric factor. Um, and this is going to just uh, tell us about the structure of a molecule. So there's a formula for it. Uh, you don't know how to calculate it, but you don't have to worry about that. It's going to be given to you um, in your tables. So just don't worry about that. Eccentric factor in tables. So if I mention um, eccentric factor, you know that's something you get in your table. And critical pressure, critical temperature are also things you guys are going to find uh, in your tables. All right, so to start... Uh, I want to start off with ideal and non-ideal gas equations. So you, we all know our ideal gas law, which is PV equals equal to RT. Um, again, just to clarify, there's no NRT because that V is in molar volume. So it's in units of something like mole per meter cubed. Um, yeah, and also uh, I want to note that this equation is for ideal gases. So that means... Z is equal to 1, which is something I'm going to talk about uh, in two seconds. Um, and ideal gas means that there are no intermolecular interactions between molecules. Intermolecular interactions. Interactions. Uh, pretty straightforward, nothing nothing too complicated. And then under that is for when we have a non-ideal gas. Non-ideal gas. So you're, you're basically going to be told this in problems that you have to deal with. Like it's going to be clear that you have an ideal gas or a non-ideal gas. And you can see that we have um, this Z here. Uh, so this is something we could calculate. Um, or we might be giving um, a formula or some correlation for Z, and we're going to have to figure out what Z is. So it's something that um, we're, we're going to have to use for a non-ideal gas. And we know that Z is a function of P, V, and T. So it's going to change depending on the pressure, the, the molar volume, and uh, the temperature of our species. So then, um, right after that, I wanted to talk about the Pitzer method because it ties in with uh, finding our Z for non-ideal gases. So, um, <coughs> pretty straightforward. Here, I've uh, showed you Z is equal to 1 plus beta naught plus um, omega beta 1, P reduced over T reduced. So, uh, the P reduced is what I showed you before. So... Um, that's P over P critical, and same thing for T reduced, T over T critical. 
So your critical ones are found from your table, and then your P and T are, are things that are going to be given to you or you're going to have to find or something like that. Uh, so yeah, again, your beta naught and beta one, um, eccentric factor here, I'm going to underline that in green is something from your table. That's something you, you will find in your table. Uh, same thing with critical temperature and pressure, depending on the species you have. Um, and then for our beta, not beta one, they're functions of T reduced. So again, T over T critical. Um, so you're going to have to have a temperature to calculate uh, the beta, not beta one. So basically all you really need for Pitzer method, I'll write it here, need T and P. You need a pressure and a temperature in order to use the Pitzer method um, to 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 you to find your Z. That's what I'm saying. Or if not, it's going to be something like you have to work backwards or something like that. But I don't think it'll be that complicated. All right, our next equation um, that we can use is the Van der Waals equation. So we call this. Um, <laughs> a cubic equation. I'm going to write that here. It's a cubic equation. So that means uh, that it's used for liquid and vapor. So used for liquid and vapor. Uh, behavior. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, your A and B, put this in black, or maybe here, A plus B, so A and B, are going to be positive when, if you're giving their constants, so our positive, their constants you'll be given, our positive constants. And when they're zero, uh, you're actually going to notice that uh, you get the ideal gas equation. So when zero, ideal gas equation. Yeah, pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. Um, the reason why we call it a cubic equation is because uh, it's cubic in molar volume. So here we have a V squared um, and a V. If I just show you here. So if I were to put all my molar volumes on one side, I would get molar volume cubed. That's why we call it um, <coughs> a cubic equation. So if I move them all to the left-hand side of my equation, we'd have a V cubed there. Uh, all right. So the next equation you guys are going to see is the red lake Kwong equation. So again, this is a uh, cubic equation. Cubic equation. So if I were to move uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, so yeah, cubic equation uh, pretty straightforward. Um, a and B, again, are constants, um, and they are functions of T critical, P critical, as you can see down here. So T critical, depending on your species, is going to be given in your table, P critical in your tables. So A and B can always be found um, with, it, with this. Uh, the things you're going to need to solve this equation are going to be... Uh, you're going to need, so here off, so A and B will always be available for you guys to find because T critical, P critical, you just have to know the species for that to be true. <coughs> uh, so yeah, maybe I'll just write that. You need to know species to solve because you're going to need to know the, the critical temperature and pressure of that species. Uh, to solve. So yeah, basically it's just, um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just 
plugging in numbers, how am I going to find P? And you could see from the equation, this equation isn't easy to solve for molar volume. So it's kind of going to be, in our case, for tests and stuff, guessing and checking if you have to find molar volume. That's how it's going to work. But something like pressure or um, is something is something easy to calculate with this with this equation. So note, maybe I wouldn't use a red light Kwong equation if I was trying to look for molar volume. I'd use something uh, maybe a bit easier. All right, all right. Uh, next, the rocket equation. So this equation is used to, so here we have liquids. So for liquids, for liquids, and we're gonna use this to find uh, the molar volume of a, of a liquid, so this is the molar volume, this is VL sat, molar volume of a liquid at its boiling pressure, at its boiling pressure, and you could see that this is from... Um, a bunch of critical data. So uh, my T reduced here is, uh, as I've said before, this is T over T critical, T critical is given, Z critical given, <coughs> and same with B critical. These are all things you can find uh, in your tables. So yeah, you're gonna need to solve this basically uh, a temperature need temperature to solve pretty straightforward um, it's you you literally have one unknown and you will find your molar volume of your liquid um, really not too complicated um, so yeah here I'll just show you on your table uh, here's our Z critical, T critical of a species, uh, V critical, and always remember, watch your units, just if you're ever, um, make sure you're checking your units, here's centimeter cube per mole, maybe uh, in your final answer for your V, you need meter cube per mole, so make sure you know how to do that conversion. And then here um, is the eccentric factor, what I was talking about before. P critical and T normal is uh, not for this video, but yeah, here's all your critical data that you're <coughs> that you're gonna find for your for your species. All right, lastly, I want to get into uh, well, just a little intro into beta and kappa. So beta is referred to uh, also really quickly. Um, usually, you're gonna see these used for liquids. Uh, so they're always gonna like they can be used for gases or vapors as well, but uh, in our class, in this class especially, you're just gonna see them for liquids. So, uh, they're always positive for liquids. So maybe I'll write that here. Always positive for liquids, except water between zero and four degrees. Um, our beta, this here is what we call volume expansivity. Volume expansivity. And kappa is isothermal, isothermal compressibility, compressibility. Um, yeah, and so they for beta, you might see your units as, um, I don't know, something one over 
degrees Celsius. And for kappa, you might see your units as something like 1 over bar, for example. And then uh, under it, I just wrote a differential, which relates uh, molar volume to beta and kappa uh, with changes in temperature and pressure. Uh, so yeah, it's just, uh, my video doesn't really focus on beta and kappa, but you're going to see it more when I'm talking about uh, how am I going to calculate entropy and enthalpy and tying it together with uh, our equations of state, so why they're important. All right, that's it, guys. Um, I'm not going to do a summary for this one. Um, 